In a previous video, one learner asked, why are human needs so unequally met around the world? What you are questioning is the gap between what you read in the Declaration of Human Rights and what you are experiencing as an individual. You are making a very important and even critical point about the nature of our social world, namely that there are vast inequalities in how people experience life. Though we are all human, some humans live far more privileged lives than others. Understanding why this is true takes us into the heart of social sociology and social justice studies. Let me offer some analytical tools as well as some questions of my own. In sociology, we use the terms ideal culture and real culture. Real culture is how things are, and ideal culture is how we want things to be. Unfortunately, there is always a gap between the is and the ought, between how things are and how things should be. The Declaration of Human Rights is a very aspirational document describing how the world should be filled with dignity. The hope was that these humanitarian principles would be adopted and embraced by nations around the world. The fact that they were not fully adopted in far too many places in the world is an absolute and sad social fact. Living conditions for peoples in refugee camps, for example, in terms of basic human rights like the provision of education, health care, proper food and shelter and so on, is very far from where it should be. The gap between the real culture and ideal culture is vast. As sociologists, we have many questions about this unjust reality. Here are just a few. Who does this gap benefit? Who is most impacted by this gap? And what are, so what are the social forces that created this gap? What we know is that all through history, there are many privileging forces that impact people's lives. Among these are racism, classism, sexism, colonialism, and more. These forces creating privilege for a few and oppression for most have driven the gap between the ideal culture, what is stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and the real culture, what is actually happening all over the world, especially in certain areas of Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, and even within my own country, the United States. Our quest must be to understand the nature of this gap and how to confront this gap in the most productive way possible. We must examine the source of these privileging forces and the toxic othering they encourage. The first step is doing what you have done, namely asking questions and ultimately demanding 